$572,000. That's how much one of my YouTube channels has made in total. And here's another one that has just crossed $260,000. Or this one right here, $84,000 in total revenue. And that is just with one of my four income sources on YouTube. With income sources number two, three, and four, I was able to make another $17,000 $287 last month alone. And whereas four years ago, I was a complete beginner and didn't make any money, since then, I've been able to generate well over a million dollars on YouTube. Now, my goal with this video is simple. Pull back the curtains and show you how money is made on YouTube, as well as the four best ways to do so. Which is why I'll break down and show you the four ways I make $38,000 a month on YouTube. And just in case you're wondering which 997 course I will sell you at the end of this video, I will not sell you any course or coaching. I promise. However, what I would like to ask in return is a simple like on this video. Thank you so much. Starting off with the most common way to make money on YouTube, on number one, we've got AdSense revenue. You might notice that when you're watching YouTube videos, sometimes you'll get to see an ad just like this. Every single time that happens, you're making money for the creator that you're watching. So me now watching this ad is gonna earn this channel a little bit of money. Not much, just a few cents at most. However, if you start to get millions of views or a decent amount of views per month, that number will start adding up. So you can make money on YouTube by uploading your videos, putting ads on those videos, and that will make you money. However, not anyone can start doing this right away. So before I show you how you can join the YouTube Partner Program, which will allow you to put ads on your videos, first of all, let's take a look at how much money I have made with this income source. Starting off with my channel right here, this one has made $583,000 on YouTube. As you can see right there, I started monetizing this at the end of November. However, then I got demonetized and started monetizing again in January 2020. And as you can see, those days in the beginning were pretty slow, just $11. However, through that year, I started going crazy. I started uploading more videos, started getting more views, started understanding how YouTube works. And then at the end of the year, I was pulling about $600 or $500 every single day with just this channel alone. And that pretty much continued all the way through, where right now it's doing about $300, $400 a day. And in total, this channel has accumulated $583,000. In 2023 so far, it is at 128,000. In 2022, it did $173,000. And last month, as you can see, it made me 10K. It kind of fluctuates a bit. Sometimes it goes up a bit, goes down a bit. That is pretty normal when you're monetizing with ads on your videos. And here's another one. So in the last 28 days, this channel has made me $15,000, averaging about 500 up to $600 every single day. In 2023 so far, this one is at $142,000. So it has actually overtaken my other channel, which is quite interesting to see. In 2022, this channel did a little bit over $100,000. And in total so far, it is close to $260,000. And as you can see, it's kind of similar. So in the summer of 2020, I was only doing like $3 a day with this channel and then slowly but surely it started going up and up and up and up and up and it's kind of still going up as of right now which is why I love this income source on YouTube as this money is just coming in every single day and then we've got the channel that you're watching right now so this channel right now is doing about 50 bucks a day a few days ago it was hitting $100 days because I had one video that was taking off however this one doesn't earn crazy money whatsoever this year so far we're at 8.1k. Last year was a lot better, 34,000, which is close to 100 bucks a day on average. However, I decided to delete some videos right here. And then as you can see, obviously, the views went down as well as the overall revenue went down a lot. But in a lifetime for this channel, it still made $84,000 with a lot of ups and downs. But I guess that's just how it goes with a YouTube channel. And then I also have a few smaller ones just laying around this one last year alone, just $932 with 400,000 views, just getting about a couple dollars in every single day. So it's not always that crazy money. However, as you can see, it is definitely possible to make very, very significant money with just the ads on YouTube videos, which brings me to the next part. How can you monetize a channel and put ads on your videos so that you can make money like I just showed you. Well, for this, you need to join something called the YouTube Partner Program. And there are requirements for this. If you go into the YouTube studio on a channel that is not monetized and you go to earn, you will see exactly what those requirements are. 
You want to scroll down to watch page ads, which is the ads that play before a normal YouTube video. Then scroll down and as you can see right here, you'll find the eligibility. In order to get your channel into the YouTube Partner Program, you do need 1,000 subscribers on the channel and then one of the following. So either you need 4,000 hours of public watch time, which means that on your entire YouTube channel in the last 365 days, your videos need to be watched for 4,000 hours in total, or you need 10 million views on your YouTube shorts in case you upload them. However, most channels will indeed be monetized for the 4,000 watch hours as well as 1,000 subscribers. You can click this button right there that says get notified and they'll email you as soon as you hit those requirements. As soon as you do, you can apply for this YouTube partner program, which means that YouTube is gonna take a look at your channel and decide whether they're gonna approve or deny your channel. And that is based on you not violating any of the YouTube guidelines. When it comes to those guidelines, there's a lot to talk about. However, in general, it comes down to the following points. First of all, do you make content yourself or do you steal content? If you make content yourself, you should be fine. However, if you directly re-upload videos, YouTube is not gonna approve you for the partner program, simply because you're not an actual creator. All you do is simply replicate content and directly re-upload it to your channel. However, if you're making videos like me here on camera, you should be totally fine, as long as you still follow all of the other guidelines. So right here, there's this forum that goes over all of the YouTube channel monetization policies. I heavily recommend you read this after watching the video, but here are the main points they will check when you apply to the program. First of all, the main theme of your channel. So what kind of videos do you create? Then they'll take a look at the most viewed videos, your newest videos, biggest proportion of watch time, and the video metadata. Basically set, they'll scan these videos right here, which are probably gonna be your best well-performing videos, and they try and figure out if everything is advertiser friendly, which you can read about right here. For example, if you've got a lot of swearing, a lot of inappropriate language, as well as violence, as well as adult content, and shocking content in your videos at all times, chances are they're not gonna approve you for the partner program. However, if you make very family-friendly, wholesome content, yes, they will probably approve you. But there's a lot more to this. What I recommend you do is check out these forums. I'll leave a link in the description down below after watching this video so that you get a better understanding of what you can monetize and what you cannot. So as soon as you hit those requirements, you're allowed to create a Google AdSense account, which you can then create through the YouTube studio on the earn page. And then from there, once you have done that, your channel will go into review. Now that might take a couple of days, usually between two up to seven days. And YouTube will then let you know if you're approved, meaning you're into the partner program or you got denied. Now, hopefully you get approved into the partner program, which means that you can now put ads on your videos. However, how do you actually get this done? In order to do so, you wanna to go to the YouTube studio and you'll find all of your videos right here, as well as the monetization icon. So for all of the current videos you already have up on the channel, you simply wanna go from off to on and then save it. And if your video is longer than eight minutes, you can put multiple ads in your video. Here's how you do that. So you go to that video and then right there, you click on the monetization icon, which will bring you to this tab right here. As you can see, if the video is longer than eight minutes, this right there will be clickable. You wanna click on review placement. And then as you can see, it allows you to add multiple ads into your video. The way you do that is by simply selecting the timestamp where you would like to add this. For example, three minutes and 28 seconds in, you simply click right there, you select that part, and then you click on plus ad break. And then just like that, as you can see, an ad will then be inserted. Now, very important, you placing an ad right here doesn't mean that YouTube will show an ad every single time you do so. As you can see, note that ad breaks don't guarantee ads will appear for every viewer. So what I usually do is I insert an ad every two minutes, starting at minute 2.30 and then from there on, every two minutes or so I insert an ad, which helps me to make more money from the ads on my videos, simply because more people will get to see the ad. I also see a lot of people talking about how they don't wanna annoy their audience so they don't put multiple ads in their videos. However, if you wanna grow, that is a pretty stupid thing to do because YouTube is a business, they wanna make money. So if you're not extra monetizing your videos, chances are they're not gonna show that video as much compared to a video that has a lot of more ad breaks in them. Now, once you have been monetized, if you upload a brand new video, which will look like this, once you go for the next tab, you'll come across the monetization tab. So right here, you then click on on, 
you click done. And then once again, if your video is longer than eight minutes, you can put multiple ad breaks. In this case, this video is not, so I can simply keep going. The next thing that you'll run into is the ad suitability. So this is where you need to tell YouTube if there's any concerns with your video. It's very important that you do this accurately so that your ad rating is gonna be high so that they trust you. Otherwise, if I lie all the time and there's a lot of bad stuff in my video that I don't mention, such as violence, for example, the YouTube systems will figure out anyway, which means my ad rating will drop. And because of that, chances are every single time I'm now gonna upload a new video, they're gonna have to do a manual check whether I actually did this correctly or if there's a problem with showing all type of ads on my video. However, for my videos like this, there's no concern. So I can click none of the above, click submit rating, just like that, and then continue uploading the video like you normally would. Now that we know that, what happens if you get denied for the partner program? Well, it actually happened to me about seven days ago on a brand new channel that I was starting. As you can see right there, your channel wasn't accepted for monetization. What should you do next? Number one, review our feedback. So YouTube is gonna tell you why they denied your channel. In my case, it does not comply with the YouTube monetization policies, which allows me to click and then once again, go to that form. Now, obviously there's a lot of stuff in here. So it's not quite 100% clear what is the issue with my channel. So if this happens to you, it is very, very important that you really analyze the entire form, go through all of the policies and then try and figure out what it is on your channel that you got denied for. In my case, I've already analyzed why this happened to me. I think it is because I was using too much AI in this channel. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of get rid of that AI stuff, replace it with human beings and then reapply. Because when you get denied for the partner program, 28 days later, you can reapply with your channel, which for my channel, as you can see, it says you can reapply starting December 28, 2023. If I've made the necessary changes, I will then get approved and still monetize my content. With that being said, let's now figure out what decides your earnings. Because for example, on this channel, I've got 122,000 views. And with those views, I made $1,200, which means that for every 1,000 views, I roughly get about $10. However, who decides that? And where does that money come from? Because on this channel right here, 26,000 views only get me $77 instead of, for example, 260. So here I only get $3 for every 1,000 views. And that is correct. Not every single YouTube channel will make the same amount of money per view. The reason for that is because our money is being made from advertisers, wanting to get in front of our video. However, the topic of our video, as well as the audience and the season will always fluctuate. Meaning the amount of money that advertisers are willing to spend to get in front of the viewer on a specific video will always be different. And I wanna show you an example for that. So I just searched for vlog and vlogs are a classic example of usually kind of videos that don't really get premium money simply because anyone could watch this. For example, a weekend in New York City. My grandma could be watching this. My younger brother could be watching this. So I will now click on this and I promise you, you'll probably see a general kind of ad. I recommend you try this out for yourself as well. And there you go. So this is a car ad from Nissan. This is the kind of stuff you would also get to see on TV. It's not a very, very detailed ad. This is kind of just awareness marketing. Because of that, they're not gonna pay crazy money because the chances of someone watching this vlog converting into someone buying this Nissan car is very, very slim. And then next up, we've got HelloFresh, which once again, is kind of a general brand here in my country that technically applies to anyone. And because of that, this creator right here is probably not getting a crazy amount per 1000 views. However, let's then also analyze the other side. For example, dropshipping videos. Dropshipping is an online e-commerce business model which means it's very, very targeted as in the people that watch these kind of videos. These are people that want to start their own dropshipping business, which means that you can sell them software, you can sell them courses, coaching. There's a lot of profit to be made in those industries. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this video and I'm going to predict to get some sort of software slash business slash course ad. Let's see if I'm right. So we have Vention.io, as you can see, an automation platform. And as you can see, that is indeed a software just like I predicted. Or this video right there, also about Shopify dropshipping that has an ad from Wix, which is a website builder. These kind of ads pay premium, crazy money 
to get in front of this audience. Because chances are they're interested in starting their own website, and if they convert, that is gonna make Wix a lot of money. Hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars. The term that we use to figure out how much money advertisers are spending per 1,000 views is called CPM. This stands for cost per mill, and this is the amount that advertisers pay to get in front of 1,000 people on your channel. The money that you actually get to keep is called your RPM, revenue per mil, which you can find back in your channel right here. As you can see, my RPM on this channel that you're watching is $10.07. Now, once again, this will also always fluctuate. However, this is the actual amount that you make per 1,000 views. The difference between your CPM and RPM comes from not every single view being monetized, as well as YouTube taking 45% of your earnings. And the money that you get to see right here in your studio is the money that you get to keep. So YouTube has already taken their part from this. Which brings me to the next point. How can you increase your CPM because that is actually possible. Take a look at one of my channels right here. This is the CPM, $56 overall. And on specific days, some videos will get $190 CPM, $100, $144. As you can see, this list right there with CPMs on my channel is simply insane, $57, $209. So yes, it is indeed possible to get to these crazy numbers. However, this is because these videos that I'm uploading are very, very targeted to specific audiences. Audiences that have money to spend. They're in high earning industries, plus the videos are longer so I can put multiple ads in a video. A video topic with a very, very high CPM could be, for example, the best e-commerce platform or the best website builder simply because people that are searching for this are interested in starting a website, which means that they're probably gonna need to spend a couple hundred dollars to actually do this, which means that if I click on this video, once again, companies like Wix are dying to get in front of that audience. There are so many website building companies that will then bid against each other to get in front of that audience, which will drive up the price to get in front of the people watching these videos, which will benefit the channel owner. So if you do want to increase your CPM, you need to think about making content that will target generally an older audience as they've got more money. An audience that lives in tier one countries like the US, Australia, the UK, Canada, and the list goes on. Make longer videos so that you can insert multiple ad breaks in that video, as well as cover topics that are in high earning industries. However, what is very important is that a lot of people will see this and they'll now think, oh, I need a high CPM to make money on YouTube, which is simply not true. Take a look at this. Let's say you get 1,000 views in a month on your channel. You've got the highest RPM ever. You're making $500 per 1,000 views. This means that in that month, you'll make $500. However, let's say you had 4 million views and your RPM is only $5 you will make $20,000 in that month. So even though your RPM, the amount you'll make per 1,000 views, is more than 100 times less, because you simply get more views, you'll still make more money. So don't get too blown away by my CPM right here, because with a channel like this, for example, it's gonna be hard to get to 10 million views a month. And yes, this will still earn me great money, but I'm just showing you that not always you should focus on getting a high RPM. We're almost done with the first income source. I have one final point for you, which is a question I get a lot. Do you pay taxes on this money? The answer, unfortunately, is yes. This is indeed taxable income. So depending on the country you're in, you have to pay X percentage to the government. Also, depending on whether your country has a tax treaty with the US, you could be due to pay withholding tax, which could go all the way up to 30% for your earnings from US viewers. If your country does have a tax treaty with the US, you're 100% safe, you're gonna pay 0% on that. Which means for most of you, it's gonna be 0% withholding tax, but then you have to pay personal income tax or corporate tax, etc., depending on your setup, or it could be both. So if you're in a country that does not have a tax treaty with the US, you could be paying, let's say, 30% maximum on the earnings from your US viewers, so they'll take a bit of money there, and then also the money that is left, you're gonna have to pay personal income tax as well, or corporate tax, etc., depending on your setup, like I just explained. Now I cannot go in full detail about that, so I heavily recommend you check that with an accountant as soon as you start making some decent money 
with your AdSense revenue. Income source number two that I use to make 38K per month on YouTube is affiliate marketing. Before I show you how much money I make with this, let's first talk about what exactly it is. So affiliate marketing is the process by which an affiliate earns a commission for marketing another person's or company's product. Simply said, you're allowed to promote products or services that are not your own, yet once you sell it to someone online or in real life, you'll get a commission meaning a small part of that sale amount. And just in case you're wondering if people make a lot of money with that, affiliate marketing as of right now is a $17 billion industry and it's projected to do 27 billion by 2027. So this is growing like crazy. And the way YouTube works makes affiliate marketing a perfect thing to do, but more about that later. First, let's take a look at how much money I have made with this. So this right here is one of the products that I promoted earlier this year. And so far with this product, I have made 6.6K dollars. Now, the funny thing is all of this money was made in June and July of this year. And the product that I'm promoting here is a course by YouTuber Hamza. So this guy right there has 2 million subscribers and he launched a brand new program, which is called the Adonis School. I was watching one of the videos where he announced it and he also mentioned that he'll do an affiliate marketing program, paying you $250 for every sign up that you would get him. So I was thinking this guy, 2 million subscribers, is going to pay $250 for every person you get to join his course. That is a great deal. And that actually resulted in this right here. So if I quickly go to the commission history, what you'll see is that as you can see, every single time someone would buy this using my link, I would earn $250. Now the first commission came in on the 23rd of June. And then from there on, it pretty much kept coming in almost every single day in that month. Sometimes I hit free sales in one day, as you can see right here, and I made $750 in just one single day with this product right here, which does show you the power of affiliate marketing because I did not create this product right here. I did not have to put in the effort to make a thousand videos to get up to 2 million subscribers so that I could then sell that product. All I did is basically lift on the success of Hamza to make a few commissions. Now, I will reveal to you how I promoted this offer later in this video. But before that, let's take a look at a few more results. So this right here is another affiliate marketing offer. In the last 28 days, as you can see, I have had quite a few sales. Usually I get like two, three, four sales a day. However, sometimes it's zero sales with about 30 up to like 50 clicks. So the conversion rate could be a little bit better. However, as you can see, I currently have $4,800 pending as the commission payout. And then I've got another product right here in the last 30 days. This product made me $312 in commissions. Lifetime, I'm close to 600. And I've got a few more that are a bit smaller. However, that is just to show you that yes, with affiliate marketing, you can make pretty good money. And the good thing is that some of these will continue to pay me every single month without me having to do extra work. But before I explain how that works, let's talk about how you should choose the product that you're gonna promote. And the best way to do that is by letting you know what I think you should look for, which are pretty much the same things that I look for myself. The first thing I always take a look at is what is the commission amount? And this actually comes from a mistake I made earlier this year. Because I started promoting this offer, which as you can see is doing very, very well. I'm getting like three up to six conversions every single day for the last three months now. However, as you can see, I've got 300 commissions yet only made $1,000 with all of those commissions. So per sign up, I only get about three up to $4, which yes, does make me a couple hundred bucks a month. However, it is not the best conversion amount because I need to get thousands of signups per month to make very good money. So that is definitely a mistake I made. If you want to start making a hundred bucks per day with affiliate marketing, it's going to be much easier to sell two products where you earn a $50 commission than a hundred products at a $1 commission. Then I take a look at whether the commissions are recurring, meaning once someone signs up using your link and they continue to use the product, you will continue to earn a commission. Let's say that you're promoting a software. It's a very good software. People continue to use it for about 12 months on average. That means that as soon as you get that person to sign up for their first month, there will be another 11 months to follow where you still get paid from that sign up you had 12 months ago. And then finally, what I take a look at is, is this company an industry leader? Because what I found is that if you're promoting a product that is kind of unknown, but also it's not one of the best products in that industry, 
you're really gonna have a hard job selling that product to the customer. Whereas if it's a industry leader, it's gonna be so much easier. But still, that leaves a lot of products to promote. And the first question, do you choose a physical product or do you choose a digital product? Digital products could be softwares, courses, online templates, or anything else that people sell online. Physical products could obviously be anything that is a physical object. Now, which one is better and why? In my opinion, digital products are so much better to sell. The reason for that is there are way higher margins. In general, there's just a lot of more cost involved in running a physical product business than a digital product one. Reason number two I like digital products more is because once again, they can be recurring. If you're selling software, chances are that person will continue to use it every single month. And some companies have recurring affiliate programs that will continue to pay you. Whereas with a physical product, that is not the case. As well as that digital products are almost always instantly accessible. So my recommendation, definitely stick to digital products. Which brings me to the following point. Where do you actually find these offers that you could start promoting? There's many ways. Let's take a look at the most common ones. And then in my opinion, the better ones. So the most common ones that most YouTubers will show you are affiliate marketing programs, networks. So this is basically a hub where you can sign up for an account and then on here, you can find tons of offers. So the most common ones are partner stack and impact. This right there is partner stack. If you sign up for an account, you go to marketplace, you will find all of these offers right here. So all of these are companies that do have affiliate marketing programs. Now there's a lot of these. So on partner stack, one of the biggest ones, you can find so many different programs. So this right here is one of the tools that I promote on partner stack. As you can see in October, 62 clicks, November, 82 clicks, December so far, 18 clicks. I have 11 signups and free paid signups, which means I have generated them $128. And for me, that only resulted in about 10 bucks so far. However, what I just noticed is that I just made $8.70 for a transaction. And this is 30% revenue sharing for every transaction. So if that person continues to use it, it's gonna pay me $8.70 every single month, which on a yearly basis is about a hundred bucks. Another big platform is called impact.com. A lot of affiliate marketing programs are on here. As you can see, I promote a few, not getting too many clicks, just a few per day. However, as you can see this week alone, I had one day where I made $36. The day after I made $72. So that's another $108 right there, not too bad. On here, it's pretty much the same. So you sign up for an account, you go to brands, you go to five brands, and then on here, you're gonna find all sorts of affiliate marketing programs that you can join. Mortgages, you can use GPS location software, uh, VPNs, there's pretty much anything that you'd wanna promote, you can probably find it on Impact. Now, one annoying thing in my opinion is that when you just sign up for an account, or even when you've been using this for a while, if you sign up for one of the affiliate marketing programs, for a lot of them, you will still get denied. I guess that is something that will always happen with affiliate marketing. However, on Impact, I find it to be a bit annoying because there's not that much you can do about it or reapply or stuff like that. Then we've got the Amazon Associates program that I just referred to as well. This is Amazon's affiliate marketing program, which allows you to promote any product on Amazon for a commission. Now that's pretty cool because once again, this is such a big brand, they will do the selling for you. Everyone knows it's trusted, so you don't need to like make sure that everyone understands it's real and this and that. So this is the industry leader effect like I just talked about. Once you refer people to Amazon, they know it's real, they've probably been using it anyway, so it's very easy to get them to buy on the platform. The only downside on here is that the commissions are simply very low, just two or 3%, sometimes it's about five. However, if you wanna make decent money every single month, first of all, they're not recurring, so you need to continue to sell every single month, as well as that you need to sell quite a lot because the commissions are not that high. With that being said, coming up to my favorite way to find affiliate marketing programs is to simply go to these tools and to these platforms and companies yourself, simply scroll down on their page and then usually on the footer, you'll be able to find the affiliate program link. For example, right there, it says become a partner as well as affiliates. This is on monday.com, which is a software. So go to affiliates, start earning rewards, and you can then sign up. Now, chances are sometimes that will still go to partner stack and platforms like that, which is indeed the case for Monday. But for example, a company like Wix, the website builder that we saw earlier in this video as well, if you go all the way down, they'll also have the affiliate link which let's see where to find it. If it's not on the website, simply Google for the company, then type in affiliate marketing program. And then as you can see, we're able to find it through here. 
make money with Wix. And then as you can see, you'll get the entire sign up page right here, as well as all of the information. So if you click on start earning now, you can then sign up here. And Wix actually has their own affiliate marketing portal, which means it's not on one of those platforms like Impact, for example. Once you now have the perfect offer for you to promote, how do you actually promote it? How was I able to generate about $6,000 in commissions in just one or two months with just one product? There's a very specific, very targeted way I do so. I don't just randomly start spamming videos and sending it to my friends and neighbors to try and get them to buy something. No, I figure out where there's warm traffic, warm leads that are already interested in buying. They just need that final push, which is exactly what I did with the Hamza product right here. So this would pay me $250 per sign up. So what did I do? First of all, I actually bought the online course. So I went to the Adonis School right there. I bought it. It cost me about 750 bucks, somewhere along those lines. So definitely not cheap. It was kind of an investment. So I actually bought this and I started using this for a week. That is something I do recommend you do. I know it's kind of cliche and a lot of people say this and you might be like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. But try to actually promote products that you use yourself. Trust me, I have done both. So after using the Adonis Cool for about a week, I started to make a few videos about it. So my initial plan was to make a few videos about the offer that Hamza had, the Adonis Cool. I would make one review video, simply letting the viewer know my thoughts on the product, as well as a few other videos showing and demonstrating how it works inside the product. So before I show you the actual channel and videos that I made, how did I figure out which videos to make? I started doing keyword research. For that, I use vidIQ. So I went to keywords on vidIQ. I typed in Hamza Adonis Cool, which is the product name that he has. I searched, I went to matching terms, which is what I always do. If you're not sure yet how I use this, by the way, I've also made a full one hour course, free course, a free video about this. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But right here, I'll get to see what people search for after they search for Hamza Adonis Cool. So they type in Hamza Adonis Cool, what else do they search for that includes Hamza Adonis Cool in that search phrase? Which as you can see, Adonis Cool Hamza review was the main thing that people search for. And then as you can see as well, Hamza calls Adonis Cool. So people are interested in the calls that he's doing and just a general review of the Adonis Cool. Because of that, I knew to make this video. And that's exactly what I did. So this is the channel that I used to make all of the commissions right here. It's a brand new channel that I had set up. I used some magic to get these subscribers. I think we all know what I mean. And then I started making videos. The first video I published was, I bought Hamza's 499 Adonis Cool. Is it a scam? As you can see that video, 3,200 views. And that's when I made the review video, Hamza Adonis Cool Review, my experience after 14 days. So like I said, I actually bought the product. I used it for two weeks. And that's when I made the review video, which gives me so much more authority behind what I say versus just randomly recommending the product when I did not buy it myself. So as you can see, here's me making a video, simply giving my thoughts, and you can check this video out yourself as well to see how I did this. But here I am inside that product. I simply run the people through how it works, what happened when I signed up. I got a lot of DMs from other members asking who I am, what I'm up to, stuff like that. I basically talk towards the result that the viewer potentially wants. So everyone that would come to this video is interested in finding out whether this is an actual good product by Hamza or not, and potentially how it works. So I basically started running the people through what exactly Hamza is doing, the courses that are available in the product, how many calls he's doing, the coaches that are in the product, basically everything about the product, I told them. And then at the end of that video, I simply let them know that in case they would like to sign up and try it for themselves, and join the community, I will leave my personal link in the description down below, which is right there. People click on that, they buy it, and that's where I earned the commission. So in total, I ended up making about six videos about the Adonis School. In total, these videos only have 15,000 views, yet I was able to make $6,600 in commissions, where sometimes in just one day, I would make $750 just from these couple videos right here which does show you the power of affiliate marketing. And by the way, this is the first time I reveal what I did here. So if you appreciate the transparency here, please leave a like on the video and subscribe. However, that was just an example. I still didn't actually show you how to promote a product for yourself. What I do at first is I answer these two questions. Number one, what problem does your product solve? That can also be multiple problems. So write all of them down. Then question number two, what kind of audience is interested in buying that product 
or solving that problem. This is to make sure that you know exactly for what type of audience you're making a video. So once you've written that down, what I like to do myself is find matching search phrases to that problem it solves. So for example, right here, we've got the ExpressVPN affiliate marketing program. Now ExpressVPN is a VPN product that I have myself right here. It allows you to change your location so that you're safe or access different kind of content online. This is what it is right here. So first of all, I would have the product. I would figure out what problems can I solve with this product. I would join the affiliate marketing program and then I would find out what people are searching for that shows me that they're interested in solving a problem that I can solve with the VPN. This search phrase that I found right here is a perfect example. How to change location on Netflix with VPN. So there are people that go to YouTube and they search for this. They're already interested in changing their location on Netflix which is indeed a problem that my product will solve. Plus they even add it with VPN. So they already know what it is. They just want to figure out how to change the location on Netflix. So that right there is then a product that we can solve with the VPN. So problem, not being able to change location on Netflix. Solution, buying a VPN. That is a perfect example and it doesn't get much better. So this video right here is indeed ranking number one for that search phrase. Then as you can see, they're doing exactly what I'm teaching you guys here. They're making a simple video showing you step by step how to solve that problem. And then they're recommending the VPNs. This right there will be their affiliate link. So out of these 14,000 people, which is very targeted traffic, which is why I convert very well, a lot of people would have bought the VPN. So this video right here on just the ads, for example, might not make crazy money, but with affiliate marketing in the back end, it's making a lot of money. Let me tell you, let me show you another example. So let's say that you want to open up a company in the US. They've got different types of companies, one of which is an LLC, limited liability company. You can simply search for LLC affiliate program, there is plenty of them. For example, Taylor Brands is one of the best ones in the game. Earn up to $500 per referral. Once again, because starting a business is a high earning industry, they're able to pay you up to $500 per affiliate commission, which is crazy. 20 of these a month and you're at 10K. So first of all, write down what problem does this solve? For this one, pretty simple. It helps you to open up a company, an LLC in the US. So what you could do is simply type in LLC in vidIQ for your keyword research, and you'll find this, how to start an LLC. I would click on this, go to matching terms to find out what people search for that include how to start an LLC. And by the way, if you want to try out vidIQ to do keyword research yourself, you can check the link in the description down below, or you can get vidIQ Boost, their best plan for just $1 for 30 days. It's an exclusive affiliate marketing offer I was able to get with vidIQ. So if you want to do keyword research the best way, go check that out. You see what I did there, guys? That is indeed affiliate marketing. However, on vidIQ, I can now confirm that people search for how to start an LLC in taxes, which is a problem that my offer will solve. So people search for this. I could then make a video showing you how to start an LLC in taxes, where I integrate Taylor Brands as the best service to help you set up your LLC. And there you go. I'm now promoting it in a genuine, natural way. This video is ranking number one. And if we break down this video, all they're doing is providing you with the best information possible, showing you step by step how to set this up, and then if we go to the link in the description, as you can see, they have that affiliate link right here. And let me tell you, they're making bank with this video. 74,000 views. Let's say that even less than 1% converts. That is still a couple hundred people times $500. So hopefully you start seeing the potential here with affiliate marketing. Another great product to promote is Shopify. So this is an e-commerce store builder. So what people might search is just Shopify review. So this video, for example, 11,000 views just going over Shopify with their affiliate link right there. Or for example, how to build a profitable store. And then within that video, you'll integrate Shopify like this guy is doing here. And the best part is there are so many different offers that you could promote as well as so many different problems that people search for that they need fixed. Now within the videos that you're making, just like I did, simply have a natural call to action. So either in the beginning of the video, mid through the video, or at the end of the video, simply let the viewer know. If you wanna check out XYZ, mention your product. I'll leave the link for you in the description down below. Now the crucial part in this strategy right here is that you actually solve their problem with the product that you're promoting 
Plus, you'll get your video to rank. Because let's say you've made your video, but you're not ranking for the search phrase like you intended to, you're not gonna get traffic, no clicks, no sales. Because of that, once again, heavily recommend you check out my full one hour video that shows you how to rank videos on YouTube search. Hands down, the best thing you can watch after this video. Why? Because I'll show you step by step how I've been ranking all of these videos high in the YouTube search results. And here's proof. So all the people that search for Hamza Adana School Review, as you can see, my video shows up number one as well as number two, even on brand new channel. So I got the majority of traffic that is highly relevant to convert to that offer which it actually did. Which brings us to income source number three, which is brand deals. So a brand deal simply said is a partnership between creators and brands and is sometimes referred to as a brand sponsorship as well. Brand integrations, which is slightly different. It falls under the same thing, but it's slightly different. I'll show you a few examples in a bit. Are a type of branded content where a creator finds a way to seamlessly feature a product or service in their videos. So simply said, making money with brand deals comes down to you using products or services, promoting it to your audience and then getting paid by the brand that you show to your audience. And the interesting part is the biggest creators in the world use this as well to make money. This is Mr. Beast. As you can see, this video uploaded a few weeks ago, 102 million views already sponsored by EA. And then he has a link right there, once again, sponsored by EA. So in this video, he is indeed promoting something regarding to EA Sports, which is interesting to see. So Mr. Beast with 102 million views must get millions of dollars to show and promote EA to his audience, which is insane. However, as you can see, the concept of this video is not just about EA Sports. So this is what you would call an integration. An integration basically means that in a small part of your video, you will mention the brand that you're promoting. And this right here is another brand deal integration by YouTuber Ali Abdal, 5 million subscribers. Watch how he does it. Be way more likely to go to the gym and therefore treat my health as genuinely my first foundation. And another law that has changed my life happens to be the law of learning, which is why I'm very excited to say that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you haven't heard by now, Skillshare is a fantastic online platform that has class. And there you go. So see what he does there. He has a video about the eight powerful laws of success that changed his life. One of those is learning and that's how he manages to integrate the brand deal in that case, the sponsor of the video, which in this case is Skillshare. So it's not like randomly he stops the video, goes into a whole nother thing. He just integrates it in his video, which is related to the sponsor. And then right there, he leaves a link in the description. Now, first, let me quickly explain how much money I make with this, with the faceless channels that I own, as well as sometimes with the channel that you're watching right now. So with my faceless channels, it is a little bit harder to get brand deals simply because there's no person behind the channel. However, I have been able to get a few brand deals here and there. Usually it's just a few per year. About two years ago, I was able to get $1,400 per video. We did two videos. So all I would have to do is outsource two of the videos to my freelancer team. And I was able to get paid $2,800 in total. And then sometimes here and there, I'll get like a brand deal for like $500, $600 for just one simple video. One of my friends that also has a faceless channel last month actually made $2,500 on a channel with just 20,000 subscribers, all free brand deals. There was one massive brand that wanted to buy four videos. He charged them $500 per video. And there you go. That's $2,000. And then he had another one. I believe it was $650. I'm not 100% sure on that. However, with just 20K subs, he's still able to get those brand deals. And talking about that, let's now find out how you can get those brand deals because you might already have a YouTube channel. You've got some decent subscribers. However, maybe you've never done this before. You've never come across it before. So how do I actually get these brand deals? So in my opinion, there are two ways. One of which is the lazy and the simple way, which also converts the best. And there's a second way that would also work depending on your situation. The first way, the number one way is by simply setting up a contact email on your YouTube channel. Did you notice how in every video that I upload, I've got this email right here? That is for brands to reach out to me in case they want to work together. So you can start off by creating a brand new email. I don't recommend using the same email as the channel email that you have since then. It's one of the easiest way to get hacked simply because hackers will then already know the email that is assigned to your channel. So definitely don't do that. In my opinion, create a brand new email and then add that one just for brand deals in your description. A simple way to do so is by going to the YouTube studio, going to upload defaults and then right there, 
placing the email right here so that you don't have to do that over and over again. But every single time you upload a brand new video, it will be there by default. And then next up, if we go to my channel, as you can see, it is also in the about page on my channel right there. Those are the two most common ways where brands try and look for the email to reach out to you. So definitely add it in here as well. The way you do that is by going into the YouTube studio, clicking on customization, going to basic info, and then right there, description shows up, simply add it in here. And I actually wanna give you an inside look into the type of emails that you'll then get. As you can see, this is that email. So just a few hours ago, I got this email right here, and the list basically goes on and on. So there's a couple of emails coming in every single day that I can take a look at and potentially land myself a brand deal. And that is not just theory, this actually happens all the time. So this one right here is for my personal channel. Let me now open up one for my cash cow channels, my faceless YouTube channels. A few days ago, I got this email. I have to blur her name and the confidential info, but it basically says, I hope this message finds you well. I am reaching out on behalf of XYZ, a leading email marketing platform that has been making waves in the industry, blah, blah, blah. We have been following your YouTube channel. We are interested in the possibility of having you create engaging and informative YouTube videos about XYZ, that is the company. We are considering three different options, one video, two video, or three videos. And that is pretty awesome, right? So all I need to do now is reply to them, give them my prices, negotiate potentially, land the deal, get paid, make the videos, and there you go, just made some money with brand deals. So that is just to show you that it actually works. You can get leads coming in for brand deals by simply putting your email in the description from your videos, as well as just on the about page on your channel. But remember I said there was a second way to get brand deals? Yes, there is. This is all about reaching out to the brands instead of having the brands reach out to you. Now, obviously when you're reaching out, it's gonna be a bit harder to land the brand deal because you don't have the leverage of them coming to you. However, this can still work very, very well. You can either do this yourself or you can even hire people on Upwork and Fiverr to do this for you, where they can collect emails from brands because you might go to a brand's uh, website, for example, monday.com, and then take a look at an email right here. However, this is such a massive corporate company that you finding an email here is probably not gonna do that much. However, if you go to their LinkedIn and you see who's in charge of marketing or influencer marketing or XYZ, uh, important position regarding to brand deals for a company, you can then reach out there or you can grab their personal email from there and then reach out to that email. So that is what some of these people on Upwork and Fiverr will do in case you don't wanna do it yourself. However, you reaching out to brands itself can also be powerful. What I would do and what I do myself as well is go to YouTube, watch YouTube channels that are very, very similar to mine and then see which brands are already buying sponsorships on that channel. So let's say that I would have a similar channel like Ali Abdal, also with quite a significant amount of subscribers. I would notice that Skillshare is being promoted in here. I would then put Skillshare on my list and then see if I can reach out to them and then close them for a brand deal because they already know that they're spending money. They're already doing this. So it's not as hard to convince them to also work with me, right? With EA Sports, that might be a bit different simply because Mr. Beast is so big. It's kind of general content. So for me personally, that wouldn't be that successful as I'm kind of in the AI slash content creation slash YouTube growth scene, what I would do is go to, for example, a company called Think Media, which is very big in the how to grow your YouTube channel space and just online marketing. I would go to their videos. I would simply browse through all of them and see what brands they're working with and then reach out to those brands as well, which brings me to the next part. Once you get someone interested or you get someone reaching out to you, how much money do you charge them? To be honest, this is quite a difficult answer to give simply because I don't know what kind of channel you are, how many subscribers, etc. So in my opinion, and this is going to be kind of broad advice, what I would do if I were you, first of all, the first time that you get someone reaching out, asking for a price, simply give a price that you'd be happy with to do it for. Your first brand deal doesn't have to be the most profitable. You, you shouldn't put the focus on making the most money ever or the potential most money. No, simply pick a price that you'd be happy to do it for. It could be 500 bucks, maybe you're already very big, a thousand bucks, $10,000, whatever it is, right? Simply doesn't really matter, but just give them a price that you'd be happy to do it for and then see what they say. If they agree, that's great. You've got a minimum price that you can work with. If they say no, because the price is too high, you can either lower your price or try again next time, but that will give you data. If they say yes, you know that you're at least worth X, Y, Z, whatever amount you gave. However, if they say no, then potentially either that brand just doesn't have the right budget 
and it's not the right brand to work with, or the prices that you gave are just simply too high. A lot of times these big companies will have marketing budgets that they need to get rid of. So let's say it's the end of the year. In this case, it is at the time of me recording, December. Let's say the marketing budget for a company this year was 1 million. And so far they only spent 700K. That means they need to get rid of 300K in these last few days, which means that if you give a higher price, they'll probably just say yes anyway. Whereas in the beginning of the year, for example, or the beginning of Q1, Q2, Q3, whatever, they might say no. And like I said, there's a few different ways. So a brand deal could mean a full sponsored video. For that, obviously the price should be higher or the integration. For the integration, price will be lower. For example, for a one minute integration, just like Ali Abdal was doing right here, he might charge $10,000. Whereas for a full video, dedicated to Skillshare, he might charge you 50,000. There's big differences in that, but they both work very, very well. So once again, there's so many factors that come into play. In general, brand deals, great way to make money, especially if the product that you're gonna promote to your audience is a great fit to them as well. That way you can win, the audience wins, as well as the brand hopefully wins because it converts well, which means they'll continue to buy videos from you. Which leaves us with one final income source here on YouTube, which is actually one of the best ways to make a lot of money, which is selling your own products. Now your own products can mean so many different things. So let's take a look at what you could potentially sell. So right here, this is one of the earnings from one of my digital products that I'm not selling anymore, but I used to do so in 2022. This right here was a step-by-step -step video program on how you could hire a freelancer team so that you can outsource your faceless YouTube channel videos. This was quite all right, it did pretty well. So the first time launching was in February of 2022. So if I quickly go to that month right here, you could see that I launched this on the 3rd or 4th, I believe it was actually the 4th of February on a Friday, I launched it for just one week. And as you can see the first day, this was just a test order for myself. The first day, $2,600 in revenue, $2,400, $1,600, then zero, then 890, 300, 590, 300, and then it was done. So within that period, I think I made around $12,000 in just one week with that digital product, which is pretty cool to see. At that time, I was kind of amazed as well at how well this could do. Now, obviously I have been building an audience, a channel, etc. I had to create the entire product, make sure that people actually want the product, etc. But still, this is pretty good money. And then later in that year in April, I did the same. So I launched it again for about a week or a little bit longer maybe. And then as you can see, on the first day of relaunching, $2,000, $1,700, $1,200, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000,
maybe I'll open it again. Anyway, in total with digital products, I think I've made close to about $200,000 in revenue. Definitely not all of that is profit as some of those had a lot of cost involved as well. But just so you know, there is quite some money to be made, which leaves us with the next question. What kind of products can you sell? So the most common ones are courses, templates, done for you services, a community with access to calls and stuff like that, software, and there's a few more, but those are the main ones. Let's take a look at a few creators who do this. An example for someone that is selling an online course is once again, Ali Abdal. This is a creator that is leveraging almost every single way of making money on YouTube. So who better to look at than him? So if you go to the description on any of his videos, you'll find this right here. If you want to grow or start a YouTube channel, and then you have a link, if you click there, you'll be brought over to this page right here. This is for his course, it's called the Part-Time YouTuber Academy. As you can see right there, he's got a video sales letter. Let's say I wanna buy this, I click enroll now, and then you'll see that this will cost me about $1,000. Now this guy has 5 million subscribers and millions of views per month. So safe to say that he's making quite some money with his online course right here. If I then click on this, I can go through the checkout process and then get access to his video program. That is how simple that is. Very easy to set this up as well. His course itself is focused on helping you grow your YouTube channel, even though you might have a part-time job or a full-time job so that you can do this on the side, which is exactly what he himself did as well, which is why it's a good fit and a good product to sell for him. Now, video programs, I'm pretty sure that we all understood already. Next up, let's take a look at templates and a great example for that. So for example, this right here is a Notion tutorial. Notion is a project management software. It's a productivity tool. And this guy right here has made a tutorial about Notion. Now, as you can see, this video has 800,000 views and currently it is still getting about 74 views per hour. Now, what is crazy is that for Notion, there's a lot of stuff you can sell in the template industry. For example, this right here on Etsy, which is a platform where you can sell digital products. This is a productivity planner for Notion specifically. As you can see, ultra productivity planner, Notion template, all in one Notion Life productivity template dashboard. I assume that title is a bit unreadable just to plug in some keywords so that it performs better. But as you can see, this costs 20 pounds. I would say that's about $25, I guess, which is quite good. Now imagine you create a template like this yourself and you've got a channel that is bringing in traffic, relevant traffic to the template that you're selling. All you would need to do is simply plug it right here in your description and you're gonna send quite some traffic already. Now what is good about this is that you don't necessarily have to only get traffic from your YouTube channel. Yes, it is gonna be great in the beginning. However, there are entire platforms designed to sell digital templates. This platform right here is called Creative Market. So if you were to start selling on this platform, yes, you will drive traffic from your channel, from your videos, to the product that you've made, which you're now hosting on Creative Market, for example, but you also get traffic from this platform itself, because as you can see on here, they're selling pretty much anything. For example, display fonts. Now that is something so little that you'd probably not even think about it, but Simple stuff like fonts, you can sell for $12, $15. And it doesn't stop there. You've got Canva templates, product mockups, Instagram templates, and these can go for 15, 20, $17, $29 even. So safe to say that the template industry is huge. I myself, I've never really started selling digital templates as it doesn't really fit my demographic. However, if it does for you, then definitely check that out. I recommend analyzing platforms like Etsy as well as Creative Market. Those are the biggest ones in the industry. Number three, a service. Now, obviously a service can also be physical. However, let's focus on digital services to deliver. So this guy right there, Dave Nick, is actually someone that I know very well. I've met him many times, been on many trips with him actually, but this guy is a genius in monetizing traffic from YouTube. For example, this video right here, how to get instantly monetized on YouTube. He's got an entire video right here showing how that works. Then he'll leave a link to his own service in the description down below, which if you click on that, you'll be brought to this page right here where he's basically selling you a monetized channel. So he's got a full video about this, sending traffic to his website, click right here, and you can then purchase 
one of those channels, which is genius. And as you can see, he's selling that for $595. I was actually having dinner with Dave a few weeks ago, and he mentioned that this right here is his best performing product as of right now, which is how I know that this works so well. But like I said, he's extremely smart in monetizing his traffic. So he basically did that trick again, but then with the TikTok creativity program. So the TikTok creativity program is kind of like the equivalent of the YouTube partner program, which allows you to monetize views directly. But once again, for that, you do need a monetized TikTok account. So he makes this video talking about the best TikTok creativity program niches. He's getting quite some decent traffic here, 28,000 views in total. People can click on this link right here to get instantly monetized on TikTok. Once again, sending traffic to his website where they can instantly get a monetized TikTok account. Simply click right there and then you'll see the price, which will shock you. $1,000, that is crazy. And he's definitely selling a lot of them simply because the TikTok accounts are very scarce. It's not like YouTube, where you can do this in pretty much any country. I believe the TikTok monetization program is only available in a few different countries, which means so many people on TikTok cannot monetize themselves, which would leave the need for them to buy stuff like this. And he's just got an entire website set up like that called Done For You Dave, where he has a ton of done for you services and other digital products lined up that help him to monetize YouTube traffic like crazy. So whereas on the service, a few of these videos might seem a bit lame, I would recommend you to not really look at what he's doing in the video directly all the time, but mainly look what he's doing himself, the strategy that he is using to make money on YouTube. Truly a YouTube genius right here. And then we've got the biggest one of them all, software. Jordan Welsh is one of the creators that has done that. So this guy is big in the dropshipping slash online business niche, getting quite decent traffic on his videos with over 1 million subscribers. As you can see, most of his videos are about dropshipping and making money, which attracts an audience that wants to do the same. And because of that, he created a software as a service product. So in this video, he actually did a promo for that. It's called TriViral Vault, which is a dropshipping product. So as you can see right here, for just $67 a month, you will receive XYZ. So that right there is indeed that subscription model where if you continue to use it, he will make $67 per month from you as a user. Now this guy has got 1 million subscribers and gets millions of views per month. Let's say that from all of his subscribers, just 0.001% will actually use his software that's still a thousand people times 67 per month, that is $67,000 every single month, which is already close to a million dollars a year. And that is on the low end. I really do think that it's actually a bit higher simply because this guy has millions of views in total. He's got 89 million views. Another creator that has entered the software game is Iman Gadzi. This guy, you've probably seen him before, close to 4 million subscribers, pulls about 10 million views every single month. And in the beginning of 2022, he uploaded this video right here. Now in here, he's not directly selling a software, he's promoting a course. This is basically a video sales letter trying to get you to buy his course. Now this has seven and a half million views, which absolutely blows my mind. However, here he's linking back to a course. In this course, he will teach you how you can start your own digital marketing agency. Now, in order to run that digital marketing agency, you do need a few products, softwares, etc. Now, instead of just promoting a software that's owned by someone else, he decided to make his own software, which is now called Flozy. So basically what he is doing, he's got traffic on YouTube. He will convert that traffic into people buying his course. And then in that course, he will link back to his own software. That is one of the best funnels that's been pulled off in the last few years on the YouTube platform. Because this company right here is probably worth close to $100 million by now, if not more. And the creator has said so himself. So I'm not just randomly taking numbers here. Which leaves the question, where should I sell all of those products? Now, obviously it depends on the type of product. So let me show you a few examples per product. If you're selling an online course, the platform I would recommend myself is cool.com. It allows you to have a community tab right here where you can discuss a bunch of stuff with everyone in the course. You then also have a classroom section. This is basically where you can host your online course and there's no limit on the amount of courses that you can put in here, which is good. For example, the search course that I have right here, this is what it looks like for you as well as for the students. Very, very easy to use, add in the videos, leave resources right there, etc. So school.com overall, a great option. Make sure you check that one out. As an alternative, we have teachable.com. Now this is also 
one of the platforms that I used. I showed you a few of the stats earlier from this platform itself. This overall, you cannot really go wrong with this. It's great for putting in your video course as well as you can use it to collect all the money. So it'll build a checkout page for you with payment gateways and stuff like that so that you don't really need to worry about that. And then finally, if you want pre-existing traffic on a platform, Udemy could be an option. Now, to be honest, this doesn't really work as well if you wanna be in full charge of the product. However, let's say that you wanna put your course on a platform that already has traffic and buyers, Udemy could be great because people go on here to look for courses that they want to buy and then actually watch. For example, YouTube automation, you'll find all of these courses right here. Now, what I don't like is that Udemy is in charge of the price, so they can decide the price, which is why this course is only 13 euros, which is extremely cheap, especially considering the content is six and a half total hours. However, you can see this guy has been selling a lot. He's got close to 2000 reviews, which means he's making quite some money with all of this stuff right here. Why? Well, simply because there's pre-existing traffic, people that are already buying on the platform. However, that doesn't mean that he cannot send his own traffic to that website. As you can see right here by the link in the description, if you click on this, that will actually take you to that very same course, which means that he's monetizing his own traffic as well as from Udemy itself. If you wanna start selling digital templates, I would recommend Etsy. Etsy is once again, Again, one of those platforms that is an industry leader. So it's gonna be easy to get people to buy on this platform as there's no trust issues. Plus this already has traffic itself. So there's a lot of people that go to Etsy to look for stuff and then buy it. You can look at it the same way as buying stuff on Amazon, for example, technology. For digital templates, most people will go to Etsy and then buy from here. They'll go on the platform, they'll search for whatever it is that they need. For example, some last minute gifts, They'll go on here, they'll search. It's basically a shopping platform that is mostly used by women. So if you want a good platform to host your product where you can use traffic from the website itself to monetize, as well as redirect traffic from your own YouTube videos, this is a great option. The same goes for creativemarket.com. Once again, this already has a bunch of stuff that you can start selling and also has traffic from people that come to this website to look for Canva templates and such. Then finally, we've got Gumroad. Now this one is more for people that wanna sell, but it's not really like it has a lot of pre-existing traffic as far as I'm aware. So if you wanna send your own traffic to here, that is indeed possible. It's actually very easy to start selling. Simply click right there, sign up, link your product, and then you're done. Just bear in mind, it doesn't come with traffic already. If you wanna set up a service and sell it, the best thing to do would be to start your own website. Now you may use Wix, you may use Squarespace, Weebly, Shopify, there are so many different platforms to do so. I'm not the biggest expert when it comes to building websites, so I heavily recommend you do your own research on YouTube or Google yourself. And then finally, if you wanna build a software, honestly, once again, I'm not the biggest expert on this. This is actually not that beginner friendly to start. So if you are building a software, make sure that there is demand for it. Make sure you've got the audience. Otherwise you might be wasting a lot of money. But for this, obviously you need very good developers. So this is just the landing page, this is a website, but then obviously once you get access, it's gonna be a full software. And please be aware of what you're getting yourself into. The software game is not easy. With all of that being said, that is how I make money on YouTube and I believe you should too. If this helped you out, please leave a like on the video. Thank you so much as well as comment if this video helped you out and let me know your general thoughts. I will also leave a link to vidIQ in the description down below, which is the best tool if you wanna grow on YouTube. You can get vidIQ Boost for just $1 for the first 30 days instead of $49 using my personal link. And if you wanna watch my full keyword research tutorial about how I ranked number one with YouTube SEO, click on that video right here up on the screen. I'll teach you everything there is regarding ranking on YouTube. I'll see you there.